because there were some problems. And uh, okay, so now what we are going to do is basically we have the pie image, the mountain. We added it to the sketch. So all you did was you went to the sketch part, you add the file, and you choose uh, your background as the image, and you added it to the file. So the in the back end, the background image is saved over here. And what we are going to do is we are going to make sure that the background image is in the folder which we are working on. So I'm working on the Flappy Bird 2 folder. So I'm making sure that I'm going to the finder and I'm copying and pasting the background image in this particular folder and it's here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the frame size. So the setup function in processing, it helps me initialize my frame size as 400 by 800. And then I'm going to load my background image. So I'll just say mountain is equal to load image background.jpg, which is the name of my image. If you guys can follow with me and code with me, and I'm going to increase the font size as per the needs. So uh, did you guys do this? Did you guys load the background image? We are going to also draw. So just do void draw. And then we are going to do image. Mountain. This is going to initialize the background for the image. And then we are going to basically uh, make sure that uh, we uh, we run the draw function and see how it's working. Yeah, so now you can see that we have the background image initialized in the game. So is everybody following that? Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Sneha, Shia, Hayushi? I'm doing that. Just Not give that me coding two minutes, is that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Look at this and you can follow this here. Let me increase the font size thingy. Don't know why it's not. Okay, I think this is clearer now. And uh, okay, so uh, now we have loaded the background, we have initialized the background. And now what we are going to do is we are going to make the bird object. So is everybody following? Please unmute yourself and let me know so that I don't need to go back, to, back and forth to the meeting. We are going to initialize the bird object and the bird object is basically bird B. So what this does is it tells the class which is the bird class to initialize a bird object now you can see that it's underlined in red that means the bird object the bird class is not uh, yet you know made so we need to make a bird class so we are going to go to this thing and we are going to should be yes should be yep uh, can you show the output okay after which we are output done should be basically the background image so if you run this, it's going to show this. Are you guys getting that? Yeah, I got it. Perfect. Uh, are you she? Everyone OK? Yeah. 
Are you sure? Are you okay? I can you please unmute yourself and let me know if you have any problems. So okay, I'm going to go fast a little bit so that you know we uh, we can at least initialize the bird and everything. So we have the bird B. So this means that it's creating an object of the class bird. So uh, you guys know that uh, we can make object oriented. Uh, basically, Java is object oriented, so we can yes, uh, we can basically you know. Uh, create objects of that class. So what we are going to do is we're going to go here. We are going to make a new tab, and we are going to say that it is bird. And we are going to basically create a bird class. So if you see bird, it's going to have some. Uh, it is going to have a class bird, and it's going to have some uh, variables here and p vectors, which I'm going to discuss as well. But first, let's do the bird class. And we are going to just say, OK, class bird. Let's initialize a new, basically, class. So how did you create the new class? Okay, so go to this thing, go to this mini arrow, and say new tab. And go, in, go and uh, name the file as bird. Yeah, done. Perfect. So now what you're going to do is you're going to say class bird and you're going to have an open bracket and closing bracket. So I hope everybody knows what classes are. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. So, okay. So now we have this. And before I go over to like, uh, okay, I can just explain this here. So P vector basically is a two dimensional vector in which we kind of uh, initialize two coordinates, okay? So it has to be X and Y coordinates and we give it a magnitude as well as direction, P vectors. So this is exclusive to processing and they are basically processing classes which which have several parameters. You know? So I think someone is trying to join the meeting here. Don't know, oh yeah, okay, Mohit. Hi Mohit, are you here now? Uh, Mohit, is Mohit here? I don't know. Okay, let's uh, let's just move forward. Uh, we have here p vector, so just say p vector pause, which is p vector for the position, p vector with p and v capital because it's a processing uh, class, and then we are going to say p vector velocity, which is basically the velocity of the bird, and then we are going to say p vector acceleration which is basically the acceleration of the bird. And then we are going to say float radius equals 16. So this is basically the radius of the bird. So if I play this uh, game on the right, which we want to achieve, you can see that the bird is a small, uh, you know, uh, bird is basically a small object with a 16 pixel radius. So this is what we want to achieve. So, you know, what we are going to do here is we are going to initialize the radius as 16. We are going to say, OK, there is a constructor for the bird. And we are going to initialize the constructor with the position. Basically, we're going to say that the position is a new p vector. Pause is equal to new p vector. Guys, please code alongside me so that you're not left behind. And we all are on the same page. Velocity is equal to new p vector zero zero, and acceleration is equal to new p vector. So we are basically saying that initially there is no acceleration, initially there is no velocity, but there is the position. So we are saying that the position needs to be in the middle of the frame. That means height by two means that it is basically half the height of the current frame we have. And it is in the middle of the frame. So has, has everybody initialized the constructor? Perfect, and everybody has initialized the variables. That is also good. Now what we are going to do is we are going to apply a force to our bird. So we will say that we would have a function, which is going to be void apply force. And you are going to just say 
p vector force so it's going to take an argument which is going to be the force argument and it's going to basically apply the force through the acceleration so we're just going to be okay like add the force to the book so this is going to add the force whenever we press the keys so uh everybody following your yeah perfect everybody's on the same page now what we're going to do is see i hope everybody's understanding where we are coming from because see when i play this game uh, the bird has some sort of acceleration and some sort of bounce this is what we want to achieve right whenever i press up and down the bird is bouncing the bird is moving so this is what we are we want to achieve so that is why we have the apply force function and we have these parameters which we are passing here so uh, this is an empty like this is a default constructor this is a function and now we are going to have a update method which is going to update the bird's position and the bird's uh, acceleration each time we call it so we are just going to say okay apply the force which is going to be gravity initially and then we are going to add the velocity to position so we are able to do all this we are able to do the add function to position because it's a p vector so let's see this is blue right and then you can see the p vector is blue so what this means here is that the p vector uh, class of processing has several functions like add limit and multiply which we can use over here so that makes it very handy for us to kind of like use these variables and use these functions so now you can also see that this thing is red so i need to make sure that i initialize it here so go back to flappy bird and initialize your gravity so we are going to initialize the gravity as a new p vector which has these parameters so we are just going to give it like 0.5 and 0. That means it is 0 along the x-axis, but along the y-axis, it has a little bounce. So it's going to be like 0.5 bounce so that the bird is not too bouncy, but it has a little bit of bounce. So we're just going to be, be like, okay, p vector gravity equals new p vector. Everybody's, everybody's clear with P vector, I suppose. I hope nobody is facing any problems. If anybody's facing any problems, please let me know. I don't want you to lag behind. So now you can see that the gravity red line is gone because we initialized it. So now what we're going to do is... Um, I'm going to add these things. So just before I add these things, I just want to make sure everyone's on the same page. Everybody's OK? All cool? Yes, so we okay. you joined very late. Are you OK as well? OK, so uh, Mohit, you can let me know if you have any problems. Uh, we'll move forward. So we have position, we have, now what we are going to do is we are going to add the acceleration to the velocity. I mean, basically we are making sure that there is a movement in the bird, the bird is moving forward and it is bouncing. And we are going to say that you need to uh, basically limit the gravity and the speed of the bird by four, like the four, because like you don't want the speed to be like a lot. So we are just going to do that. And then we are going to, and we are going to basically, I just, uh, lim uh, yeah, I'm, I think I missed something there. Position at, then we just do the will acceleration. We are incrementing it and then we are going to limit it to four we don't want the velocity to be too much so that is why and we are going to just acceleration dot multiply we are going to stop the bird basically uh you know like it cannot go too fast as well 
so we need to make sure that we have that uh, basically that there is a sync between the key press and the bird. So now what we are going to do is we are going to write some if statements to make sure that the bird is stopping at the right uh, time. So we are just going to say that if the bird is escaping the canvas, then it just stops there. So we need to make sure that we have a condition for that. So we're just going to say that if the position along the y-axis is greater than the height of the frame, we are just going to stop the bird. We we'll just say velocity is zero at that point. So I hope everybody is following this. Uh, close the update function. Make sure that you don't miss any braces. And we are going to show the bird and try it how it's going to like work. So is everybody following the update function? Is there anybody who is like lost here? Could you show the code once? Huh? The, the code. The code? Yeah. Everybody OK? Everybody uh, is following, right? Sneha, uh, Shreya? Yeah, I'm done. Uh, what I'm about done. Mohit? Can you say something? If you are facing any problems, I, I know that you joined really, really late. And I don't know if you are following what I'm saying. You are on mute if you're trying to say anything. I can't hear anything. following okay perfect uh okay so now what we are going to do is we are going to show the bird so just do void show also guys at the end of the session i'd like you guys to put this on gate so please follow what i'm doing and if you want to make it easier for yourself you just code with me you know if you code with me then you don't you would follow better and then you can commit your stuff to git so we would just like what this means is that we are giving it a black colored outline for the bird. Like this is going to give a black color to it. And then you're just going to say that the weight of the stroke is two. That means I, do, I want a thick outline of the bird, which is uh, two pixels. So I'm going to fill it with a very greenish tint. So the fill function fills the bird with a green color. And I mean yellowish green color, and then we are going to give it a circle kind of like a shape. So you are just going to what ellipse does it? It takes the position along x-axis, position along y-axis, and it takes the size of the bird. So we are just going to pass it pause dot x, which is position along x-axis, position along y-axis, and then we are going to pass the diameter, which is going to be radius into two. And then we are going to try out our show function. So I'm just going to give you guys a minute to finish this so that you are in sync with me. And uh, then we are going to update the Flappy Bird file. So let me know when you're done. Let me just see if I'm making any errors here. We have an extra brace somewhere here. So I'm going to remove that. Everyone on same page? Everyone okay? Yes, sir. I'm done. Sneha, Shreya, uh, Ayushi, Mohit. Uh, Surbhi, uh, is that this whole code is within the within this word class, right? Yes, this whole code is within the bird class. Yes. Okay. Uh, did you finish it? Yes. Uh, what about more Vishwa and Mohit? Yeah. Perfect. So let's go back to the Flappy Bird class, and we are going to basically uh, in the draw function and in the setup function also we need to initialize the bird first. So if you look at here. 
we need to make sure that the bird is initialized in the setup function and we are calling the bird class. So what we are going to do here is we are going to, we made an object here, right? We said that bird B is an object. So we're just going to say, okay, B is basically a object of the bird class and we are making a new object here. So we are going to make that bird object and then we are going to draw the bird in the canvas. So before I kind of like put these are like put these if statements, I'm going to also like, okay, I'm going to put this one because this gives like a force to the bird and we've already done that. So we are going to say, before we put like the pipes and stuff, we are going to put the bird. So if the key is pressed, that means if you press a key, Key press is basically like one of the uh, methods in processing, which helps us take input like as the key. And then we are going to say that there is another P vector, which is up, is initialized as a new P vector. And what this does is it takes the flappy bird and it kind of like uh, makes a bounce and it uh, basically takes it up and down. So like a little bit up zero and then minus five so a little bit up and down so it, it gives a bounce so we're just going to say okay give me that bounce and pass it to the apply force all good there and then what we are going to do is we are going to update the board so we are going to call the update function which updates all the variables like velocity acceleration and we are going to show the bird i hope everyone is done here so what i did in this class was firstly initialize the bird initialize the bird as a new object here and then write this if statement with the key press thingy, and then you are going to update it and show it. Uh, P vector, what is P vector? Uh, who is this? Vishwa? Okay, okay. Uh, so basically P vector is a two dimensional vector, which we are using here because like basically we want to have magnitude as well as direction for the particular object like we want the bird to have a certain magnitude and direction and we need to have a two-dimensional vector in that case so processing has a class called p vector which has specific functions like add multiply and limit which we can use to apply a certain uh, velocity position and acceleration to the bird that's why we're using p vector so p vector is that does that clear? Yeah, ma'am. Perfect. And uh, p dot update like everybody's on the same page here. I hope. Yes. Let's play it and see how it works. So you should be able to see this, and you should be able to make your flappy bird bounce a little bit. Is this working for everyone? Let me know if it works or it doesn't work, and I will help you. Mm. Sir, B, could you open that word class again? Okay, okay, sure. Thank you. Where do you face problems? Is there any error you are getting in the console? Okay, got it. Got it. Very good. Uh, Sneha? Yeah, well done. Everybody. everybody is getting it to work. Great. I hope everybody understands why we are doing this. Yes. Is there anyone facing problems? Mohit, are you okay? No, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. Are you she? Shia, you are fine as well, like your bug got fixed, right? Yes. Are we sure? Yes. So, Ina, you joined very late. Are you okay? Like, do you want me to repeat things or something? Yeah, don't worry about it. Thank you so much. I'm just trying to understand what you've written so far. 
Okay, so yeah. I'll just repeat it a little bit. So what I did was basically, I started with Flappy Bird. So that was like our sketch, our home sketch. And uh, what we are doing here is we are trying to like uh, achieve this kind of result. So if I play the result, and I show you what we want to achieve, we want to achieve this. So we want it to look like this, and we want like the pipes to go red when it uh, hits the pipe, and we want the scores to show up and the background to show up. So I've sent the background to the guys, but I can email it to you. And uh, what we are like, you can follow through what I do in the uh, like basically what I keep doing, and you can watch the recording and go back to it. But I'll just send you the background in the meantime, just so you have it. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. So what you could do is you can just open a new sketch in processing. Then you can just add the background to the folder where you save the sketch. And then you are going to just go to sketch, add file, and just add the background there. And then you can just like follow through what I'm doing here in the Flappy Bird file. And uh, in the end, I can just walk you through everything again. So uh, we have uh, the show file. Everybody is able to show the bird, which is great. And now what we are going to do is we are going to move forward with the pipes. So what you're going to do, everybody, please go to this arrow and just say new tab and call it pipe. So this is for the pipe. So if you guys can see, we have pipes alongside the bird and we want to make sure that we can show the pipes. So go to pipe and let me know when this is done. Everybody, is that okay? Yeah, it's, it's done. Yes, it's done. Okay. So, uh, Tina, in the meantime, can you open like a sketch and uh, initialize it as Flappy Bird? And uh, basically, uh, what I could do is I could send this screenshot to you. You can copy the code and set it in the chat. Oh yeah, that was easier, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a very easy option and makes a lot of sense. And I have so many things open that sometimes I'm just getting confused. Yeah, that is for the bird file. So that is like basically you just create a flappy bird file, which is going to have the main sketch. And then you create a bird file, which is going to have the bird. So you can, this is for the flappy bird sketch and this is for the bird sketch, the two separate uh, files. All right, thank you. So first I'm, I'm supposed to add the image that you sent me in the background yes. uh, in the sketch and then I uh, add this to the first uh, tab. Yeah, the first tab would have until class bird. So you know the class bird, when, when it starts with class, that's going to be the second file. All right. Thanks. And uh, make sure that the background is in the folder which you are working with as well. So you can go to your finder and mm -hmm. make sure that you copy and paste the background in the folder you're working with. Awesome. Uh, it's in the same directory. And uh, when you want to make a new tab, you just go here, new tab, and name it as bird. All right, thank you. So let me know when it's done. Uh, we can wait for you for two minutes and then we can start with the bird. Mm, that's okay, I'll, I'll catch up. Thanks. Okay, perfect. Okay, Thanks. so now what we can do is we can start with class pipe. So just the way we initialize the bird, we want to also initialize a pipe object. So let's go back to Flappy Bird and first do that. So go to Flappy Bird, create a pipe object. So uh, instead of like, oh, actually before I explain the pipe objects, I need to also explain you array list because it has to be a list of pipes and not just one. So let's go back to pipe first and create the pipe class and then we will go back to the object. So go to pipe and say class pipe. Say for x, which is basically like uh, the uh, x of the pipe, like how it is going to be uh, the x axis of the pipe, basically like, you know, like it has a top, it has a bottom and it has the x position. So we're just going to say float x 
and we're just going to say float top, which is basically going to be the top. So if you play this, right, if I play my uh, right hand side code, you're going to see this. So this, this the, the pipes have a top, the pipes have a bottom. So all if you can also see like they're all random. So we need to make sure that there is a randomized like uh, top and bottom. So that's what we are going to do here. And you are just going to have like top and you're going to have a bottom float. So the reason why we're using float is because we want to make sure that our coordinates are accurate and they're double decimal. So that's what we're going to do. And we are going to also initialize a width for it. So the width of the pipe, like the how thick the pipe is, it's going to be 40p. You can initial like you can also change it if you like. Like you can make it as thick as as thin as you want. And then we're also going to have a pipe speed. So now what pipe speed means is that it's going to be moving, right? So like if I play this, we feel that the screen is moving, but it's actually the pipes which are moving. It's not anything. The bird is also not moving, actually. It's not like kind of moving forward. It's more like the pipes are going backwards. So it feels that the, our bird is moving forward. But if you saw initially like how our code works, if you play our code, like right now it's going to give errors, but if you play the code, right? Uh, if you command this and like play it, if you comment it out and play it, you can, you can see that the bird is moving up and down. Bird is just constantly moving up and down, but it's not like moving left or right. So how that works is mainly with the pipes. So the pipes are moving so that it gives us an illusion that the bird is moving. On comment that and now what you're gonna do is we're gonna initialize our speed for the pipes so that should be yeah yes actually my bird is only moving up it's not working down oh is it not working down uh no. how is, it, is it not working the way i have it it's working up it's all same but it's not working down while i press the down button Oh, okay. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. It's not going to... Uh, so basically, like, it doesn't really go down. It's going, like, how we do it, how we kind of make sure that it is uh, going to be down is this move. Yeah, but it's only working, like, if I press any button, it's only, it's only going up. Yeah, because the thing is that we have not initialized it to go down. So, like... Uh, in the key press, right? We are saying if key press, that means if any key is pressed, it will go up. So if you see this argument here, like if you see okay, this, okay. Here, it's okay. like if any key is pressed, it will go up. So key press is any key. But if you want to control it to go down, you don't really need to kind of like make it. So it, it goes down by itself and you just need to make sure that it's going up, you know? And uh, see, like if I play this main game, I don't really need the down key because it has enough gravity to pull it down. So like, I just need to make sure that it's going up and it's not hitting the pipes and it's going down by itself. And I just need to make sure that it's going up. So I think that is okay. And all we need to do now is go to the pipes and make the pipes work. And uh, the reason why it's going not going down is because of the key press that takes all the key values. It doesn't take only up. But if we said if key press is equal to up, then that'll be different. So uh, we are going to say that the pipe speed is basically three in this case. We are just going to make sure that it is not too fast. It is, uh, it is like, you know, like the frames are not changing too quickly, basically. We could have also change this key pressed and say that if key pressed, so you know, the key pressed basically would be like a uh, key press would return either. This means that if key pressed is true, you know, but maybe if we initialize this as up, I don't really remember exactly if it was up or down, like the syntax would be, yeah, let me just comment this. Yeah, this is. Three equal to yes. Yeah, because the key pressed will kind of 
return a boolean value we need to kind of do something else if you want the up thing and i don't quite remember exactly the uh you know the syntax to just get the up key but i will figure that out just after this so let's first do this and then we can customize that so uh what we are going to do with the pipe is we are going to uh, make sure that the speed is not too much and uh, it is not too slow as well so we are going to do it similarly the way we have the word so we are going to initialize a constructor with some parameters so we just say pipe uh, to return do the brace close it and then you just say close it and then you just say uh x is equal to weight plus w which is basically going to be the width plus the width we are initializing the pipe for so the x axis is going to have the width of the whole frame plus the width of the pipe if you know what i mean so uh basically like the pipe will initially have like the whole x axis because we are having an array list of the pipes so then we are going to say that Okay, you initialize the first, you first you initialize the top. So uh, did I make some? Ma'am, why pipe speed is set to three? Okay, so the pipe speed is set to three because we don't want the pipes to go too fast or too slow. So if you see here, the pipe speed is not too slow, not too fast. But if I increase the pipe speed there, it's going to be like, I make it 10, then it's just going to be a little bit faster. Should be yes. People look like, <laughs> and uh, that's not what we want. So that is why uh, we keep it a reasonable, reasonable number. We can have four or five, but I think ten. Should be yeah. Actually, I'm getting error with the width command. Like x is equals to wid yeah, plus yeah. w. It's, okay. it's showing the variable which does not same. exist. Uh, what what does it say? The ID that the variable does not exist. Variable ID does not exist. Oh yeah, because we need to initialize that. I guess. Uh yeah, yeah. So uh, I I have to get, yeah. Like so, basically, we have to do some initializations for that. So since we did not uh, initialize the width, like we were using the width, we are hard coding the width here as four hundred. But we need to initialize it here if we want to use it there. So just do, it's going to be a global variable. So see, the thing is that um, whatever is inside the class is kind of like local to the class, right? But we can access those variables by using the dot operator. But when it comes to the sketch, uh, if we make the global variable, we can access them in the class as well. So just say int read. It is going to be like the global variable, which we can use. So if you can see here, I had a pi image object, which was the mountain, which was the background. Then I had the gravity, which I used. And whenever you see, whenever you encounter a variable, which is not exactly in the class, that means it has to be a global variable initialized in the main, which is basically this, this sketch. So our flappy bird sketch is the main sketch, which calls all the functions which are inside these classes. So make sure that you initialize it there and then use it. And please, obviously, whenever you get these errors, let me know so that we are all on the same page and uh, we are missing something. I hope everyone is all set there. Yes. Let's go forward and let's now initialize the top and the bottom. So now if you uh, saw the file when I ran it, it had a random top and bottom value. So like if I run this again, you can see that the top and the bottom of the pipes are always at a different location. So if you want that, and if you want like, you know, the user to always be surprised by where the pipe is going to be, we need to make sure that it is random. So how we do that is using the random function. I know, I hope you guys already know what the random function does. It takes uh, it takes like two values, like zero and hundred, and it will generate values from zero to ninety-nine. So you know that's how the random function would work. So we are just going to pass in any values like hundred and height by two. Height by two is just basically like 
it's going to be in the middle of the frame somewhere, but uh, at a random value. So we know that our height initially was uh, 800. So it's going to basically generate numbers from 100 to uh, 400. And it's going to like uh, put that in the middle of the top. And then for the bottom also, we are going to do something similar. Is everybody okay with this? Everybody okay? Yes. yes. Avishwa, Mohit, Tweena? Yeah. Yep, thank you. Yeah, All good, then let's move forward and we are going to go forward with the hits function. So now we already know that basically like, uh, okay, before I go forward the hits, I should also initialize my pipes in the flappy word function, like flappy word class. So what I'm going to do here is basically I'm going to initialize the array list of my pipes. So if you see this, right, when I run this, there are so many pipes. It's not just one. So I need to make sure that there is a list of pipes which is being initialized instead of just one. Because in the bird case, we just have one object. But in the pipes, we want to initialize an array list of the pipes. And each time we have a new pipe coming up in the frame, we want to add it to the array list. So we are going to do that now. We are going to say array list of pipes. So this is the syntax of like initializing the array list. And it's going to be like, OK, pipe. And we're going to call the array list pipes. And then we are just going to initialize the new array list. All good then. I hope everybody has initialized the array list. Now what we are going to be doing is we are going to go in the, so since, since you guys already know that in the setup function, we are initializing the most basic things like the bird, the size of the frame, the background. So we are going to also put the pipes here and we are going to do it just after we initialize the bird. So we're just going to say, add the pipes and add a new pipe from the array list. So the array list will have a method called add, and they're just going to say, okay, each time you add a new pipe to the frame, and for testing this, uh, we also want to like do this. So uh, after you have done this, and after you have initialized the array list, now what we are going to do is we are going to, after like uh, we are going to draw the pipe on the frame. So for the condition is going to be basically like each time the frame is changing, a new pipe is going to get added. So like if frame count is like mod 75 equal equals zero, that means like uh, when the bird is in the frame and after just a few seconds of the change of frame, add the pipe. So like if you see here, the frame is being counted, like each frame is being counted. So if you add 75th frame, we add the pipe. So uh, I hope like I, I, it was a bit fast, but I'll do it again. So like see here, at 75th frame, exactly the pipes are being added here. So that's what we mean by that. So just so like the user has like, you know, a second to just absorb what's happening. That's why we add the pipes after the 75th frame. We can do it after 100 also, like, I mean, it really depends on the customization, but it just looks good. Like the bird is there, the bird is bouncing for a little bit, then the frame, the pipes come in. That's why we have the statement here, which says, if frame count is uh, like 75, basically, then you add the pipe. So mod 75 means that it's divisible by 75. You add a new pipe. So that's going to happen there at, in the draw function. Mod, mod operator takes the remainder 
and it tells us if it's you or not. And then we are going to add a new byte from the array list into our frame. I hope everybody is following this. Is it okay, guys? Yes, please go, uh, show the code again. Yeah. Code, ma'am. Also, there is no need to call me ma'am because I'm also a student like you guys. So please don't call me ma'am. I hope everybody has done until here, and then we can move forward. Wait, wait, where is I'm also getting something here. The operator equal equals none defined for the Boolean int. Where is the error? Let me just see. I must have done something there. Equal equals is not defined for types boolean oh which line is that Boolean and int, okay, I think it should be somewhere for the frame count, but then frame count should work. Uh, frame count mod 75 equals equal zero at the pipe. I think it's a warning and not error. Set types Boolean. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move forward with it and see uh, because I don't think it should be a problem. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like, I mean, because see, the thing is that we are just, we are just taking the modulus of it and frame count should be fine by saying that it's not, not defined for it. Let's move forward with it and see what we get. And uh, let's go to the pipe class first and let's complete the class and um, we show the pipes and see what, what we get. So uh, go do this and then what we are going to do is we are going to initialize a hits function. So do boolean hits in the pipe function, in the pipe class. Do boolean hits, hits what, what hits would do basically is that it will check if the bird is hitting the pipe or not. So just do boolean hits bird b. And even before we do like, uh, even before we do this, let's just test stuff by showing the pipes. So don't do anything and let's do, uh, we will do this, uh, just we'll come back to this, but let's show the pipes first and see uh, how we're getting on with that. So do void show, comment out uh, Boolean hits. Okay, now we need Boolean hits because you might have to pass it, but okay, let's just not pass anything for now. And we can first just show the pipes and see how we get on. That is something which I just want to see how it's going to work out. And uh, what I get. Just do word show. And just kind of like follow through with me. And we are just going to show the pipes and see what we get first. Just going to do this. We're going to make a... Uh, make like some shape need to fill some things we we'll just to fill initially any color and just add a little bit of shape to it so x0 basically is initializing the location and then we are also initializing the width and 
where the uh, height should be. Then we are initializing the other one. So there are two pipes. The top and the bottom of it. So let's see how this gets on a uh, height direct except parameters like uh, float and uh, float, 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 float. Did I not initialize the height? I think I did. Oh yeah, I didn't put the comma there. Yeah, okay, so let's do one thing. We are going to just call the show. Is everybody okay with that? What I did in the show function? I just want to see and show the pipe and see if it works. I'll follow, I'll, I'll do this again with you guys. But let me just see and show the pipes first. Let's just do p dot show just after see what we get and then we can comment it out to do the other stuff. P dot show what's happening here. Oh yeah, we need to make an array list of stuff first before we do p dot show because it has to be a pipes. Uh, like it has to be an object of the pipe. So let's do that first. I'm going to explain this again. I'm just going to show the pipes first. Yeah, there's no p.update function, so we're just going to do p.show. Let me see what this case is. Minus or equals to? Equals to sign? It's minus, sorry. It's minus. minus. Okay, dot. There's some problems with the pipes there. Oh, pipe dot add new pipe and then p dot show. P dot show. See now we're not getting any warnings. Errors, there are errors. Uh, okay, let's do one thing. We can just uh, complete the whole pipe, like the whole function, and then we can show the pipes and see. Because there must be something we are missing then. Uh, go to the pipe function and let's uh, go from where we left it. So go to the pipe function and go to the Boolean function. Go to like the Boolean hits thing. So just gonna do Boolean hits bird B. And then what we are going to do is we are going to initialize this hits B thing. Comment this part out for now. And I'm going to comment this also. Once explain the frame count part. Uh-huh. What? Frame uh, Yeah, so the frame count is basically like if you play this, right? And you see this, like at 75, the frame is going to change and add a pipe to it. So that's what we want to achieve. So that's why it says frame mod 75 equals zero add a pipe. So when the frame is at the 75th frame or even like divisible by 75, it's going to add new pipes to the frame. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Now, uh, like what we're going to do is we're going to have the hits thing. So hits per B and we're also going to initialize it here. So we are going to uh, we are going to make sure that we call the hits function. The hits function is being called here. So okay. So first, let's just do the hits function. So we are going to go to pipe. 
do the bird seeds thing let there be and we are going to basically make sure that we have a condition of when the pipe is getting hit so just say if basically if the position of the bird in the x-axis is greater than the x-axis of the pipe and the bird position on the x-axis basically like I'm also going to play it and show you what I mean by here. I mean by this. And then you're going to say that if the X plus the width, basically that means that if the bird is going off the frame and if the bird is touching the X axis of the pipe, then it's a hit. And also this is true for Y as well. So you're going to say that if the bird's position along the Y axis is less than Uh, top of the pipe plus the radius of the bird so basically like if the bird's position along the y axis is in between like it's less than the top of the pipe that means it's between the pipes and like basically like it's it's less than the top that means it's here and it's also greater than the bottom that means it's just literally in the middle so like if i play this right what i mean is that it's here like it's in the middle it's not touching the top it's not touching the bottom that means it's safe so we're going to say that we are going to say that then you are going to like if the bird is below the upper pipe there is a collision the bird is below the upper pipe or above the uh the above the lower pipe but is above the pipe or above the lower pipe there is no collision right either below the upper pipe or above the uh, top plus PR, so top plus the radius of the board, and the Y position is less. Return true, there is no collision if uh, the bird is okay. Yeah, yeah. So, what this would mean is that basically, like, first we are seeing this condition, right? We are seeing that the X position of the bird is basically greater than the x position of the pipe so that means that it is going off this and uh, it's basically saying that the x position like when it's along the x-axis it is greater than the x position of the pipe itself and the y position of the pipe is basically less than the top of the uh, top of the first pipe that means like it's going downside or it's going above and it is also adding the radius here so basically it will basically say that it's this kind of situation it's this kind of situation where it's kind of like going down and it's also like having the bird radius count here so it's going to change the color so that's what it means so it will say that there is a collision in that case does that make sense Yes. A little bit tricky because uh, it's a little bit, you know, like there are too many if statements, nested if statement. There are so many variables, so it can be a little bit shaky. So if you want me to repeat anything, please let me know. Also, make sure that your braces and everything are indented and there is no, you know, like mistake happening there. So, like, uh, height minus bottom minus the radius of the bird. It's like a lot of variables here so I will also explain it again once more so okay so what we mean here is that basically like you know you take the top of the pipe you also add the radius of the bird to it and there is the top of the pipe is basically like the top position this part you adding the radius of the bird and you're saying that, okay, yeah, like it's going here, it's going here. So that's where the collision will happen. Either in the bottom part, it will be basically like the height minus the bottom, minus the radius of the bird. So it's going negative or it's going too positive. That's where the collision is happening. I hope that makes sense to everybody. Okay return to that is collision is happening else you just say that there is no collision happening and the bird is in safe state so basically like 
if the word is outside of statement in which we are declaring the fact that it's going off the frame or it's going basically like off the uh, it's going too much into the pipe or too much like downside that's where the collision is happening so we're going to say that if this is happening then go outside of the first if statement and the join false i hope everybody has done the hit function so that we can move forward with the update and uh, the reason why the pipe because hello hello uh, yeah yeah could you scroll right the code oh uh, yeah yeah sure yeah is everybody okay with the hit function Yeah. Yeah. Sneha, Anisha, Ayushi. Actually, um, I've got a problem. Like, uh, in the if statement that is b dot position dot y greater yeah, than yeah. top. So the problem is that you, I I only put two bases, so it was three because you know, like it's closing here, it's closing here, it's closing here. No, no, the here. next one. The next one. Okay, yeah, that In also has. That. that also has three. Yeah, yeah, three braces. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, so that's why always make sure that you're closing and opening, so you can always check it here. So if you click on this, it will show you that you're closing it here. If you click on this, it will show you that it's closing it here. So always click on the brace and make sure that you are closing it or opening it, and it's all, you know, like you're not missing any base basically. So that's how you check for bases. And uh, usually the editors put the bases by themselves. But in this case, uh, processing doesn't do that. So uh, I hope everybody has done the hits function. Yes, I'm done. So let's move forward with the update function now. So like as we had the update function for the bird, which updates the velocity of the bird, towards up and down. We are going to do the same with the pipes. But this time the pipes are going in the negative direction as I showed you. Yeah. See the pipes are going like that side. So the frame is not moving, it's the pipes. The bird is not moving forward, it's the pipes. So the pipes are going like towards left. So that's what we are doing with this. So if I see the pipe is going in the negative direction towards x axis. So like, I mean, it's in the x, negative x. So that's what I'm going to say, like float x was basically like the speed of the pipe in the negative direction. So I'll just say minus the, basically like minus x, uh, x has a value, right? And I'm always subtracting the pipe speed from it so that it goes in the negative direction. This is a shorthand, which is basically x minus pipe speed. So this will up, keep updating the speed of the pipe towards x, like in the x direction. Then if you wrote the void show function, just uncomment that and we're going to work on it now. I hope everybody is on the same page here. Yes. Yes, I'm done here. We sure? Yeah. Mohit. Wait, mom, wait. You want me to wait? Shreya. I'm done. Yes, I'm done. Everybody done? Everybody good? Mm -hmm. Go. Okay, let's move forward with it now. What we're going to be doing is we are going to... Uh, did you guys have the show function this much written? Yes. 
Yes. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to add the if condition in the show function. So we are going to say that we since we want the colors of the pipe to change every time there is a hit, we need to make sure that we write the condition in the show function. So the show function basically shows the pipes, right? And we want the pipe colors to change every time there's a hit. So I'll just say if hit, that means if there is a hit, if hit is true, then you just fill the color as a reddish tint because I want the pipes to be red. And if there is no hit, then we are going to. There's going to be an error in the hit because you're not passing the hit in the function. So make sure that you go to show, you say Boolean hit. That means there is an argument which we are passing inside the show function, which is going to be like true or false, either true or false. Then if there is, if it's true, we will fill it with a red tint. This is a red tint, light reddish. Else we are going to give it a else we are going to give it like a greenish tint basically. That means it's normal, it's safe. You can get these values online if you want to change the colors. These RGB values. Sorry, I think I missed the color here. Like I missed like I wrote wrong color here. So put that as 217. The first hit is gonna be red tint. And in the second value, we are going to be like 224, 129, and 127. Now what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you remove this statement because we have already put it in the if conditions and we have all the other values fixed up. Everybody okay? Paint it. Everybody okay? Yeah. Vishwa, Sneha? Yeah. Just a minute, I'm doing that. Yeah, I'll just wait for you in a minute, and then we can. I'm done. Great. Okay, so now what we're going to be doing is we are going to kind of like work on the sketch function. Like, I mean, go to Flappy Bird. And what we're going to do in the Flappy Bird is we are going to initialize the pipes. We are going to make sure that the pipes show. So we are going to do that here. So as you guys remember, I, I wrote this for loop, but it wasn't working because there was no speed to the pipes. There was no like, you know, update functions and stuff. So just uh, uncomment that and we are going to work with that now. Uh, did you write the for loop yeah, or was I too fast at that moment? Just write a for loop just uh, after the dot show. Everybody okay? Okay, now let's go forward and we are going to do one more thing, which is going to be like, uh, okay, let's do one thing. We have initialized the for loop, which is basically initializing the array list with like the size of the array list. And it's going to say size minus one is basically until the end of the array list, just like basically until the length of the array list. And then we are going to say that uh, basically it's going in the backward direction. So, you know, like it is going uh, in the reverse and then we are going to fill the array list in the reverse and we are going to say, okay, so the first pipe is going to get the first object from the array list. So get function does this. It takes, uh, it takes an argument I and it will get the first ith object from the array list. And then we are going to update the pipe. So p dot update. So now what we are going to do is we are going to put the conditions here. We are going to say if the pipe hits, 
That's P is the object, right? Like B is the bird object. It's and we are going to like sorry, like close the F statement, make sure you close it. And then we are going to say P dot show is true. P dot show is sorry, P dot show pass true in it like, because it's not returning anything. I mean you need to make sure that it's like this. And because it takes the argument true, right? Like if it's that means if it is true, that is you're going to pass true. And uh, another thing here is safe. So what safe means is that the bird is in a safe state or not. So what you're going to do for that is you're going to in, just before the for loop initialize a boolean safe and initialize it as true. Which is going to be the safe state of the bird. Like is the bird safe or is the bird unsafe? So make sure that that is there and you say in the if statement safe is equal to false because there was a hit. Is everybody following? So please. Yeah. Um, why the Boolean safe is showing error? Where? Mm, where you initialize it, the uh, boolean safe equals true. Yeah. It's showing error. It's showing a warning, but I don't think it's error. Let me just see what it's showing. Why is my console not? Yeah, this saying that the save value hasn't been used yet because we have only initialized it here. But when we do like save is false and we are going to like use it, use the value of save here. So it's just a warning, ignore that. We are just going to like go forward first. And first, uh, you're not getting a red error, right? It's a warning, right? Right? Yeah. So just move forward with that. Actually, it. I'm getting a error uh, in in this p dot show function. It's saying that the function show does not accept any parameters. Okay, because you must have not initialized it. So go to your show function. Okay. Wait. You need to make sure that it gets a boolean because we are using it. You know, otherwise you will get an error there. Mm. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, everybody okay? Yeah. Everybody's with me? Yeah. Perfect. Now let's yeah. move forward. What we're going to do is we are going to, uh, again, like put the conditions here. Now we have already put the condition for the hits. That means if, if the bird is going to hit the pipe, that means we are going to basically like show the pipes and we are going to show the red pipes. That means we are going to like pass a true value here. And if we pass true value, that means we are going to fill the pipes with red color. Otherwise, it's going to be a green tint. So now what you're going to do is you're going to put an else statement and you're going to say p dot show is false. That means it's going to be and the reason why we are not putting the safe as true over here is because the safe has already been initialized as a true variable. So we don't need to say safe is equal to true here because safe is already true. You know, safe has been initialized to false in this condition, but in this condition, safe is true. So safe is the same value as it was. So now what we're going to also say is uh, another very important thing, which is basically like, we are going to say that if the x position of the pipe is less than the width of the pipe in the negative directions, like basically like we are we are constantly moving the frame, right? So like if you see this, right? 
we are constantly moving in the opposite direction. So we are also removing these pipes. They're not in the frame anymore. So how do we decide that? We decide that through the width of the whole like thing. So like basically we need to make sure that if the bird is moving up and down and the pipes are also moving, there has to be a condition when the pipe goes out of the frame. And this is the condition. That if the X of the pipe is basically less than the negative of the frame, then you just explain remove the, explain the if else part once. Which which part? Uh, if else uh, line uh, forty three, else part. Okay, uh, let me just say that just a sec. So okay, so what we are doing here is basically like we have the hits right. So you know the hits function right. You know this, right? Yeah, yeah. So what this does is it takes the bird object, right? So what we are going to say here is if P dot hits bird, that means if the bird hits the pipe, then what you're going to do is you're going to show the red colors. That means you're going to pass through in the show function. And what that was what, the, what that is going to do, it is going to it is going to show a red tint. Otherwise, we just said that else, that means else it hit is false. So the first condition in the show function was that if hit is true, then you should write it. Whenever you say if hit, that means if hit is true. Else you show as a printed. So what we're doing here is we're going to say if p dot hits word, then you show a red tint. Otherwise, you will just show the green tint. That means you will pass false in the show okay. function and that will show a green color. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we are gonna make sure that we remove the pipe from the frame if it goes outside the width of the frame. Remove the eye the pipe. And now let's just see uh, is everybody here? Yes. Let's run this and see what we get. Yeah, now you can see that. Okay, there is. Yeah, now you can see that you can see the pipes. You can see the bird. The bird is moving. The pipes are moving. Is everybody here? Yeah. Great. Sneha? Yeah. Yeah? Actually, my pipes are moving, but the bird is still there. Bird is not moving? Who is this? Yeah. Okay, Shreya, uh, yeah, like uh, your bird is not moving and your pipes are moving. Okay. Sneha. 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 Oh, Sneha. Shreya, is yours working? No. No? no. Not I got an exception, I guess. Who who's, uh, is working? First, tell me that, guys. My program is working, but the bird is still not moving. It is still in place. I'm getting an error, some bracket and error, an unexpected token. Okay, so Shreya can be for your error. What the error are you getting? I'm getting some unexpected token, like some braces. Yeah, exactly. That one, that one. I'm also in getting the that pipe, one. In, in the pipe class. Yeah, in the pipe class. Where? After if boss dot boss dot y p dot boss dot y. What is the unexpected token? Can you show me the error? Uh, the curly braces. Oh, so you must have not closed it somewhere then. I'm seeing that, but I've closed it everywhere. Just, just what, what you could do is just over over the braces, click on them, and make sure that. Okay, I got it. Got it. Yeah, where is it? There is then closing, uh, uh, closing parenthesis is missing over there. After yeah. express W, there should be triple uh, parenthesis closing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what's in our files. Make sure that you have three here. Okay. Just the pipe, pipe, pipe. Everybody okay? No. No? Actually, it's working, but 
that bird is just going down it's it's not moving the bird is not moving as, as expected yes. yeah same for me okay uh, the pipes are only moving can you show, can you show me what you are saying can you guys one of you guys share your screen i'll see what what's happening it's working for me i guess it's working great uh, sneha yeah. can you see go to go to actually i'm not using by my laptop i'm online by my phone okay uh, yeah same yeah same uh, yeah the same thing is with me also i'm using it with my phone and okay so putting it on okay. laptop you know like uh, okay you can do it here is okay uh, go to your flappy bird set okay. go to happy bird sketch and make okay. sure that you have this and make sure that you are okay. keep up. press everything is fine i guess yeah can everybody like who i'm hearing a lot of background noises here uh who is the like okay okay let's run through it okay uh it was moving earlier right the bird was not stops earlier i suppose are we like उडर आई कॉन्ट यू it's only just moving upward that time also no it's moving how downward it's basically like if you play it right it's going to go uh, it's going to be like this so it's going to you have to press the up key or any key and it's going to go up and it can go down but it cannot like you it will only work with the up key is it working like this yeah it's going only going up upward only yeah. but that's the purpose right because it will go down by itself so you need to make sure that you play it like this so it will go down by itself because of gravity okay now mine is working mine is working now everybody mohit are you still facing problems okay yeah what is the problem Can you tell me? So the code. So the code. Ah, uh, but can you tell me what the Happy problem bird. is? Like, what's the error? I think I missed the parenthesis. Yeah. So like basically, when I was saying it here, right? So always check for it. So always check that the parenthesis has been closed. Mm. Which line? Is flappy it? bird part. Flappy bird. Flappy bird part. Uh, wait, wait. Scroll down, scroll down. Five star remove. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, one, two. Okay, I got. Okay, okay, now working. Perfect. Okay, now now that we've done this, we've added the pipes. We have like added the bird. It's moving. We are going to move forward with. scores so as you guys know that we also want to display a score and we need to keep displaying it so what we are going to do here is we are going to take the save uh mm. save variable and we are going to pass it in an if statement and we are going to say that if the bird is safe then you increment the score otherwise if the bird is not safe you decrement it by 50 so what we are going to do is do it outside the for loop so go here do it outside the for loop Say if safe is true. Increment the score. 
else incremented by 50. Now you're going to get an error because we have not initialized the score yet. Nice so we need to go and initialize the score. So go up. Go up off the like, top of the file and just say score zero initial. Everybody okay? Yeah? Yeah. All right. Vishwa, Ayushi. Oh, Ayushi, you, I didn't see that. This method show in the type does not be applicable to. Yeah, see, Ayushi, you need to pass the hit from hit Boolean value there. So, like, make sure that that's there. So, make sure in the show function you have the Boolean hit. Otherwise, it will not accept any arguments. So, make sure that that's there. I hope that works. Yeah. Just let me know if that works. Okay, so uh, go here, go to the show function in the pipe and pass a Boolean hit variable. So the last part. Uh, what do you mean by last part? Uh, that uh, if a statement is safe. Yeah. Oh. So now, yeah. Yeah, okay, let's move forward. What we're going to do is we have initialized the score. We have decremented it as soon. Like So basically what this means is that if the word is safe, increment the score, otherwise decrement it by 50. And then we are going to also uh, kind of like put a color and a text size to it so that like we can see it. So you just put like a bluish color. You can get all these colors online as well, like the uh, like the values. Then we're going to put a size of sixty four pixels. Then we are going to put a score, like basically like we are going to uh, use the text function and put a uh, put a like location to the score. It'll be like uh, width divided by two. And then we are going to say, okay, like basically constrain the score with these parameters. Okay, I hope everybody has done this. Just let me know when you're done. I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. Perfect. Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to run it and see how it works. You should be able to get this and you should be able to see the score up there. Is it working for everyone? Yeah, it's it will okay. work with the upkeep. Yeah. It's really it's good. Like Great. And now what we're going to do is we are going to also experiment with the key press. I want to see like how the up and down works. So let's do that. And uh, uh, I, let me just check with everyone. Everyone okay? Actually, I'm getting an error. Okay, what's the error? In the last line, like after score equals constraint, yeah. it's showing 
an error with the curly braces found an extra character without a to match it uh, curly braces okay uh, what line is it the last line four equals constraint yeah and then it's showing found an extra character without a curly braces to match it Ah, uh, you have an extra curly brace. Can I check that? Check your braces. Like click on them. Make sure that all of them are closed, and make sure that you close in the uh, draw function. And uh, basically, there's no extra curly brace. That could be a problem. Does it work? No. No. Uh, can you send me the last part? Like, can you send me the last part of your code in the chat? Like, copy paste it and put you on the phone. Okay. Uh. Okay. Wait. Like, can you show me? Can you like tell me what the error is? Found and. Can it WhatsApp you? Like, can you? Can you like uh, what you could do is okay. Go on your phone, right? Open your phone camera and just show me the code on the laptop. Okay. Yeah, like oh, like put it, uh, put the camera, like reverse it. Yeah. Uh, can you go like zoom in a little bit? I can't see anything here. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Wait, let me. Uh, it's just so so blur. Wait. Uh. Okay. Like, put the camera a little bit back so that it creates it. It at least focuses on the screen. Okay. Or you can do one thing. Do do one thing. Just give me a minute. I'm trying to join it by my laptop. Then I can present you the screen. Okay. 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 Until you do that, what we could do is I could just Google the fact that, like, uh, the upkey thing. Upkey. Key code. So if he coded, uh, coded, coded, if he equal equal coded, okay. If key is coded, that means key key is up. Then you do this. Key is down. Okay. So instead of using like instead of like kind of like, uh, we would have to define this key coded function if you want to use up and down. We could do that, and we could just like say, if uh, key equal equal coded, then you do this, and then you just call the function key pressed, and then we can just move the bird accordingly. We could just say like, if key pressed, so we can just call key pressed, b dot key pressed, or key pressed b. We can just call the function, and uh, that should do it, I guess. If key pressed, if key equal equal coded. Yeah, you can present the error now. I mean, you can present the screen now. I'll stop presenting. Are you presenting your screen, Sneha? Yeah. I can't see anything. Minute. 
Yeah. Uh, can you increase the font size? Go to preferences, go to file preferences. Or just press, press command plus if you can. The statement bracket is uh, not closed. Uh, where? Uh, if safe. Oh, uh, yes, that's the error. Yes, 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 yes. See? That's the error. Like if score plus uh, plus and then you're not closing. Yeah. Uh, then we have some other errors as well because see, ah, uh, you're not. Else, uh, else you're closing it. Text size. Did you initialize score? Yeah. Why is text size giving an error? Text. Size. Can you hover over the error and see what the error is in the text? It's T E X T, not T E S T. What is she, what is she? T E S T. She has written T E S T. Okay, I I couldn't see that. Okay, yeah, please put T E S T and not T E S T. It's text, so. Great, now run it. Yeah, that's it. Great, uh, great, that's looking really nice. It's flying really fast though. I think you changed the velocity or something. No, the gravity is not working, I guess. Can you show it again, Sneha? Is everybody else able to work it? Yeah. yeah. What's happening? Yeah. Like the key is not working at all. Like uh, it's not moving. It's like stationary. The gravity is not working. That is so weird. Okay. 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 Uh, quit this. Like close the screen. I mean, close the. Uh, yeah, and go to your like scroll to the no no stop don't stop presenting show it. And increase the font size. I have to see the code. I am not able to see anything. Uh, can you present again, Sneha, please? Uh, yeah, and increase the font size. Uh, go to preferences. Like, go to file. Preferences. I increase it to uh, 18 or something. 18, 18. Okay, okay, just say okay. No, no. Uh, okay, now. now uh, that's if okay. you could see that there's 0 0.5, as she has written 0, 0.5 oh, and yeah, at PV vector gravity. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I did say that we need to have a little bit bounce, not too much. Here. See, zero point five. Zero. Zero yeah. Now play it. It just fall down. Uh, uh, okay, okay. Press the up button. Press oh, yeah, the up yeah. button. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Working. Great. Yes. And why is it so fast though? Like it's not supposed to be this fast. <laughs> Go to your pipe speed. Did you initialize rest G? Go to pipes. Go to pipe. Like yeah, and go up. Oh yeah. See, like yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Pipe speed is three. That's okay. Yeah. Go down a little bit. It's a bit too fast. I don't know why. Like, I mean, in my case, it's not that fast. Go down. Okay, go down. Ah, uh, yeah, everything seems fine. Okay, like, in decrease your pipe speed to two. Go up. And play it. 
प्रेस था आपकी टू मेक द बर्ड मूव टाइम Uh, we can do one thing. Is everybody happy with what they have? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Three. Very much. <laughs> yeah, three as well. You understand the whole like session? Yeah. 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 Should I stop sharing my screen? Yeah, yeah, sure. Do you want me to repeat anything? No, it's fine. Oh, hey. No, ma'am. Okay, and uh, okay, let's do the equal thing. I'll just explain this. What it this means is basically like over here we are saying that we pressed what we used is just saying that you know like key press will. Uh, Uh, it will return a boolean value in our case what we are using it says if the key is pressed then you just do it like you just do this but what we could also do is we could uh, we could create our own key press function and we can just like kind of do this and we can just like say if the key code is up then do this otherwise take it down like, like take it down means it will just like have the positive value and uh, then we can apply the force but then it would have like several is if statements but the reason why we are not doing it here is because if, if you run it and see we don't really need the down key because it goes down by itself because of gravity so all we need to do is we need to make it up so that it hits the pipe or it like i mean so that it doesn't hit the pipe so basically you just want to make sure that you press the up key and you do it like that because it goes down by itself so you do it don't really need down key because of gravity you can also like choose different backgrounds you can like do anything like you like so backgrounds can be changed there can be birds can be changed like there are few people who are using pictures at the birds you know like you can do literally anything so you can customize this according to your wish and you can also push the code to our github repository which i'm going to share with you now so if you could please like push it whenever you have time and uh, that would just like help because you know you can have all your code on git and if you guys attended today's session you would also know that we had a git session today so you can use that like you can use whatever you learn there over here and push your stuff on git then code code i'll send you the link to the repo this is the repository you can you can like uh use it and you can push it there and you can basically push it under my names folder because you are in my team so push it there and uh, next in the next session we are going to do snake game using javascript so just like we did this we are going to have snake but we are going to use javascript for that so uh if you guys like don't have experience with javascript it's okay we're going to use it and we're do going to do it from scratch it's going to be much more simpler than flappy bird so you've already done flappy bird which is like even harder next session is going to be snake game and if we have time we can do one other game as well so hoping to see you next week until then if you have any questions let me know sure
Perfect. I hope you guys kind of like understood and. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm.